Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome to another Supreme Commander epic. That's right, it's that time of the month, no not that time of the month, the other time of the month when replays last just a little bit longer. So if you haven't got time to watch it now, why not dump it in your watch later playlist on YouTube and you can catch it when you've got a chance or just watch it in stages, that means more views for me. It's up to you after all. Uh, Alright, that's enough of that. What have we got today? It's going to be custom 7v7 because 6v6s are just passe. And uh, it's going to feature a plethora, and yes, I did use that word, a plethora uh, of your favourite pros, I'm sure. And the best news is there's no news, so we can go straight to that action, which is going down on a generated map. I'm ready. You guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Ching! Ka-ching! Exciting stuff. We'll go over what the uh, intricacies of the map have to offer in this game in just a minute. First of all, let's introduce our players. Starting up here with Team 1 at the top, then Team 2 down at the bottom. Going first for Team 1 right in the top left-hand corner, sporting the season's fabulous Vivacious Violet. It's Eco Noob going Aeon. And he's opening first land. Team member number two to his right in Spetsnaz Green. It's Excelsior going UEF, opening first land. And then at the midpoint between the two sections, the dividing section, uh, dividing part of the two sections of Team 1, got there in the end. Uh, it's the winner of this week's amusing name award. It's Usuk Medik. Uh, and I appreciate that that's probably not how he wants me to pronounce that, uh, but he can Suk Medik if he thinks I'm going to be saying that all the way through the uh, cast. And in fact, <laughs> I'm going to call him by his original name before he started trying to be clever and funny uh, and call him Foley. So here he is, Foley. He's going Ferrari Red, going Cybran Bless him, opening First Land. Over to team member number four. Now, on the right-hand side, we have Mimics going Aeon in Elephantine Grey, opening first land. And in the top right-hand corner, in Cyanide Cyan, it's Arch Simcat, another UEF, he's going first land. On to the two front row. First of all, on the right-hand side, in Pontiff White, we've got Hakamakamaka, but you knew him better as UD. Our first Seraphim, I think, of the day so far, and he's going first land. And last but not least for Team 1 over here on the far left, it's No One Cares. Oh, I'm sure they do, really. In Lurid Green, going UEF, opening first land. All right, let's check out Team 2 now. Down here at the bottom, first of all, in Breast Cancer Awareness Pink, it's Ikagami. Uh, he's going Aeon opening first land. Team member number two to his rights in his, his rights, his right even in Dijon Yellow. It's Grimplex, he's going Cybern opening first land. Midpoint dividing player, it's none other than Blodis sporting his classic regal purple going Cybern. Yeah, opening first land. I think about that for a minute. Next up in Burgundy Red, it's the one and only Jagged Appliance. There he is, opening first land, going Seraphim. And in the bottom right-hand corner in Fecal Brown, we have Battlefront, another UEF. He's gone first land. And the two front row players for Team 2 are Turbo 3 over here in Baby Pink, opening first land, going Aeon and going second air. And over here on the left-hand side, we have Tagada, also going Aeon in Electric Blue, going first land, second air. So there we have it. Game quality at 94%. It doesn't get much better than that. And would you look at the average totals for these two teams in global ranking, 21-29 and 21-14. Those are very high averages. Highest rated players, although really doesn't make a lot of difference when they're this high. You've got UD at 2300, Eco Noob at 2300, uh, and uh, Foley on 2400. And then we've got a couple of 2500s of Tagada and Bloodir on Team 2. Lowest rated players, Turbo 3 at a, still a whopping 1800. Uh, so, quite frankly, uh, hold on to your potatoes because there's some high order business in here. Let's check out the map. Oh, first of all, we should talk about racial preference, but then should we? I mean, there's 14 players and all the races are represented uh, and pretty diverse, actually, by the looks of things. Good old mix. So I'm not even going to bother with that, quite frankly. Let's check out our map and start with what has been effectually named, not by me, but by Captain Klutz, who gave me this replay on my Discord server. Thank you very much to him. Patreon Discord owner, by the uh, server, Patreon only Discord server, I should say. Uh, by the way, guys, if you want to get involved on that, it's a mere dollar a month. Do check that out. Uh, here is uh, the plateau in the center named Boob Plateau. 
by Captain Klutz uh, for obvious reasons. And you can see this poor gas, poor lass has got a terrible case of chicken pox or has been eating a sesame seed bagel very clumsily. It's littered with uh, all kinds of lumps and bumps. 75 mass of pop, not too shabby. So a lot of mass to be grabbed there. And then another ring of sesame seeds around the outside, all 75 pieces. Got a little bit of uh, reclaim around the smaller nodules here and there, third nipples and the like. Um, <laughs> That's and fourth nipples. I uh, don't know what's going on here. And then uh, the odd rock just dotted around. But otherwise, in terms of mass points, a pretty liberal strew a strewing of mass across the entirety of the map. And now we've done those introductions, I think we can afford to speed things up just a little bit. No water, of course, today. Sorry about that. I know some of you guys love your water maps. I love to get some of the... Uh, uh, naval battles, the big naval battles, especially on the epics going, but I uh, hope you'll agree by the end of this, this is a worthwhile uh, inclusion in the epic saga, that is Guilecast Epics. Um, it is a 20 by 20, so it does take a little bit longer for some of these chappies to cross the divide. What do we got here? A couple of Selens out from Jagged, giving himself some early intel coverage. Eco Noob. <laughs> mentioning in local chat that there's reclaim. I mean, I don't know when the last map that you saw didn't have a reclaim on it, especially if you're a pro and you're playing regularly. Are they talking specifically about the plateau, I wonder? No, just more generally, it would seem. Scout plane out from Tagada. Going to get an early read on what's happening in Team 1's bases. T1 bomber out from who's that from so many players excelsior quite possibly yep that's coming south with great gusto a couple of vulnerable engineers kicking about here and there might be targets of opportunity tagada advancing forward with his commander and an early transport making its way to boob plateau it's actually a real shame we're not going to have more of this map in the future because this is a generated map as this could become a real feature of future casts a regular a regular favorite in the uh, the channel with a wonderful name like that as i say take no credit for designing it t1 land factory going up on the plateau there and immediately you can see five labs queued up on that factory you can see in the bottom left hand corner with that wonderful new addition to the ui courtesy of the devs here at faf letting us know what players are building in their land factories, or at least have queued up. Uh, so another group of engineers was dropped off for Grimplex, and he's nearly completed a T1 land factory. And then we also have engineers who have made landfall from Team 1, though. And, uh, oh, are they Team 1? No. They are not Team 1. That's Battlefront. So Battlefront from Team 2 has aggressively placed himself right the way over here in the hopes of shutting down any potential drops from Team 1. Yeah, it just goes to show you, don't assume on geography that people are of any particular team. So there you have it, firmly in control for Team 2 right now. By the looks of things, as interceptors tangle above said plateau. Foley coming in to join the party with his commander. Say there's some pretty big rocks, definitely worth getting your hands on. We'll check in with the reclaim figures in just a moment once the initial exchanges have gone down. Another drop from Team 1. This time meets with a little bit of resistance. Engineer or two getting popped in that. And the chariot's not making out either, but Ikigami does manage to get one T1 engineer onto that plateau at least. This is a pretty comprehensive shutout from Team 2 on Plateau. There's only a few mexes. I think there's looks by looks of things about four mexes on the Plateau. But then, of course, there is all of this mass, which has mostly been hoovered up already, actually. It has to be said. A few more rocks around here on the left boob. But uh, otherwise, this Plateau, mainly desirable for its strategic location. Tagada losing a mex to no one cares who's strolled forward with his commander he's on around 10,600 HP Tagada on 10,000 
100. And it looks like he's abandoning that forward position after having lost that mex. That was an aggressively placed land factory. He's got ACUs from Eco Noob and Excelsior advancing on that position. And of course, no one cares in the immediate vicinity as well. Wise decision not to try and hold on to that. It was never looking likely with the lack of support he's getting on the ground right now from his teammates. What's happening over in the east, meanwhile? We've got UD, who's currently retracing a little bit, having advanced forward to the midpoint. That is a pretty solid location right there for a forward base from Turbo 3. <coughs> Excuse me. Already equipped with some point defense. Point defense has taken a little bit of damage, down to 400 hit points there. T1 bombers or a T1 bomber from Turbo. Just trying to thin out some of this spam over here. It doesn't last too long though. Gets himself shot down. Gets so hard to ascertain the progress of the team sometimes. So on the ground to the left and right of the plateau. Team 1 seem to be making some advances. Plateau of course firmly in the hands of Team 2. The Eco Noob. Now under pressure from some early T2 air gunships from Tagada, Eco Noob on 7,400. In come interceptors from Team 1 to try and shoo those away. Tagada taking the opportunity to advance a little bit with his commander. Eco Noob. Not looking like he wants to stop anytime soon. Oh, I tell a lie. Immediately hangs a Louis. Curse of the commentator comes into play. Ikigami now joins the party down here with the double upgraded Aeon Sniper Com and using that extra range to properly harass No One Cares over here, who's been beaten down to around 7,500 hit points so far. Aggressive place for an upgrade there, sir. Tagada starts a gun upgrade, gets a T2 engineer in to help complete that quickly because he's taking a lot of fire. He's already down to about 7,100 HP. Excelsior, though, also taking fire. Those gunships are back once again. Eco Noob back here was starting work on an anti air turret. That's going to get completed helpfully by a T1 engineer nearby. But Excelsior now getting advanced upon very, very quickly indeed. As Spam comes in from Tagada on the ground and Ikigami turns up with his commander as well. We could be about to see our first ejection and a T2 gunship. A renegade from Bloodir adds insult to injury in the first ejection at 8 minutes and 50 seconds. It's Excelsior from Team 1. Will any fairies die today? Yes, they will. And in some horrible way, down they go. Transfer of control of assets moved over to UD who is getting into a fight himself over here. Turbo 3 in trouble now as he's surrounded by a ton of fans. How on earth did he get himself into that position? Uh, it's all academic now. Bosh as UD kills off Turbo 3. Nine and a half minutes just shy on that side of things. And the comms are getting into it again over on the left side of the plateau. This time, no one cares. Taking a battering. Can he be the next ejection? He's deep into the red. Three comms on one. Grimplex gets the final blow. Wow. So three comms out inside 10 minutes. Two from Team 1, one from Team 2. UD again is the beneficiary of all of those structures and units. But Control immediately transferred over to Eco Noob, who also was gifted over the base immediately to his right from Excelsior's departure. It makes sense, of course. There's no way UD wants to hand, uh, handle control of two major sides of the fight, sides of this map. That would have been less than ideal. Foley advances with his commander, throwing down an anti-air turret just a little bit further north from that forward land factory. Now, what effect will those ejections have? Eco Noob, the 2300, now is sitting on three bases worth of resources. And Tagada getting locked onto here with no support. 
Air Escort turns up for Eco Noob to keep those gunships belonging to Arch alive. In comes friendly interceptors, but too late. Tagada goes down. And suddenly the match is leveled. Two kills apiece. Control transferred over to Grimplex, who's sitting back here with his commander. Grimplex, a 2,000 rated player. It could have gone to Ikigami down here, but he's also a 2,000 rated. Uh, this looks a very intimidating on paper for Team 2. This side here. Eco Noob currently generating 184 mass per tick. Only slightly more than Grimplex at 183, it has to be said. Who's sitting on two base there. Has a couple of extra mexes here and there on Boo Plateau, but that's about it. T2 upgrade on the way for Hakamakamaka. 84% in climbing. The Jagged Appliance, who already has the T2 engineering suite on board, his commander is working on some more point defense. And could this be the end of the very initial opening stages where activity falls off? Uh, well, maybe not yet. We still have roaming groups of T1 launching probing attacks and close proximity between commanders and their forces over here in the east as well. Battlefront moving up to join Jagged Appliance. Jagged working on a second point defense. Yudi has two of his own up and running. The odd named unit in this pile of tanks here for Jagged Appliance. I think that suggests it's maybe not the naming mod. Wouldn't it be all the units or maybe only special units get the name? Certainly a change, if that is a change, that I'd be in favour of. Other than having filthy quantities of dirty green writing all over the UI. Making the game unwatchable. Renegade gunships brought to bear against Eco Noob's forward base in the west. There are a couple of archers on the ground over here. One of them taken out. Oh, interesting. Renegade's not happy with just taking out that base. They look like they want to go and inflict heavier casualties. Move up towards this forward base over here, which was no one cares. Foley brings in a couple of interceptors, but they're going to get annihilated by the escort detail. In comes another group, though, and they do manage to shoot down all of the gunships with the help of that uh, extra air superiority fighter from Arch. So, Tech 3 air on the field for both Team 1 and Team 2. You can see Grimplex with a handy... A little group, a little cluster of air superiority fighters down there. Hakamaka busy tooling up his frontline eco. Foley with a little forward shield gen there. The odd unit of T2 wandering around, taking pot shots at things over in the east, and I think we're definitely. Approaching the mid-game now, where tempo falls off a little bit. Ah, and speaking of T3 Air, little strap bomber up here at the top for Mimics. So, not one dedicated air player. There's a couple of players here and there dipping their toes in the air game for both teams, I think it's fair to say. We've seen the gunships out from Blood Air already, and he's already at T3 Air. Although, it doesn't look like he's going to be producing ASFs anytime soon. He's got 30 engineers, or had 30 engineers queued up on that build queue. Whether or not he builds them all, who's to say? Probably wants to get a decent number of these iron reactors online first, get that power flowing before he really settles into air production, if that's his plan. Certainly seems like it might be. Where are we on 
total mass accrued. Well, there's a sizable advantage for Team 2 so far. Some 21, sorry, 31, 32k, something like that in terms of total mass. Uh, but then you have to remember, of course, this is a 7v7. So although that sounds like a lot, divided by 7 players, eh. Hard to say for certain, of course, without a real intensive analysis of where the mass has gone. But uh, it's usually... Uh, what the hell's going on there? <laughs> Some kind of strange rave happening down here with flashy glow sticks. whole group of hobos have had too much meth to drink. Looks like they're going after that one engineer. That <laughs> one engineer of UDs. Just chilling. Attracting a lot of aggression from those hobos. Battlefront. Throwing down some tactical missile defense. Oh, and he gets himself a T3 engineer up front and starts work on a Ravager as well. That could be interesting if you can get that up and running. See that forward base. Those uh, defensive emplacements there and those T2 mexes would all be in range. Certainly open him up to get a bit of a point defense creep on. Of course, something like this, you really don't want to overextend when you're facing this many players. It's almost guaranteed to go the distance for a long game. This one, if it's not finished early on, just by the very nature of it being a 20 by 20. But a nice interception there from Mimics. Not resting on his laurels with those air superiority fighters shooting down. Uh, I think that was an alumna. Yeah, it was an alumna. With a couple of harbingers on board. They regrettably don't make landfall. Eco Noob now up to 337. Grimplex on 361. So Grimplex chip leader right now on Eco, sitting on two base and a couple of mexes up there on the plateau. Blodir also doing well. He's over the 300 threshold at 311. Uh, so far, we yet to see a second player on Team 1 break the 300 barrier. The Ravager does complete. One of the TMDs has been taken out by a T2 point defense, but that's not going to get last very long. The engineers that helped build it scurry away for shield coverage. Only one makes it, but Jagged Appliance getting aggressive here with that commander. Gun upgrade, T2 engineering suite, and a handful of asylums there to back him up. But UD feeling aggressive as well. He's advancing. Battlefront comes in to assist. It's a full-on com confluence right here on the eastern portion of the midpoint. UD with 14,000 base health, just gets a rank in vets, and now 18,000. Continuing to pursue not one, but two commanders, and facing down a Ravager now, which is targeting him instead of that forward base. He's got a lot of support on the ground, mixed race between Rhinos and Ilshivers. Jagged Appliance goes into the yellow. The shield collapses. Although those are pretty tooled up commanders, they're lacking on the ground for support. We do have a couple of sniper bots coming in from the southwest. But they're not going to be here. Or not going to be impacting this for some time. Jagged Appliance. Nice rack in vet. Gets him up to just shy of 19,000. Battlefront absorbing most of the fire now. But he's still got some 10k hit points to play with. And the ground spam is wearing thin for Yudi. Who's actually in trouble himself. He's into the red. He's had a gunship battering away uh, on him. While we were looking at those other two. He manages to kill those off with his mobile flak. And get under shield coverage. But wow. That nearly... Worked out pretty badly for Team 1. Jagged Appliance. 
in classic Chav fashion, going, You want some? Come on then, as they're running away. <laughs> How many drunks outside a UK pub on a Friday night have you seen acting like that? Ikigami airlifting his commander over to the eastern side of the map to help with this push. Drops his com off. That's a double gun com with personal shield. And throws down a land factory for good measure. Why not? Always good for your health. And is that our first experimental? It's hard to say. I often miss the notification pings, as you guys love to remind me. And uh, unsurprisingly, first experimental on the field at 20 minutes is a monkey lord constructed in this new little forward construction facility equipped with nine basic hives as yet to be upgraded and now those infernal sniper bots come into play can yudi hold the line is the question he's working on some artillery if you have the economy can be an excellent counter. But those artillery pieces are expensive. If you are wondering, if you don't know the values off by hand, you're looking at just shy of 2,000 mass for each Tech 2 artillery piece. You compare that to, say, a sniper bot. Commander under attack. You're looking at 880 mass. Slightly less range and uh, obviously no splash damage. <coughs> I like what I'm seeing here from Team 2. Mobile shields assisting with those sniper bots and why not add a little extra to it with a base shield as well, creating a proper forward position to well, annihilate Hakamaka's forward fire base, and you can see UD has dropped right back over here. Working on another artillery piece. It's a wise decision, because if that shield goes, and if there are enough sniper bots down here, by the time you realize they've locked onto your commander, it could be all over for you. So he's working on some artillery over there. What's happening over in the west? Looks like a major breakthrough on the ground from Grimplex, who has amassed a pretty sizable force of Harbingers right here, along with extra Asylum Shield gens and a whole horde of T1 spam. We've even got the odd sniper bot in there as well. So nice unit comp. A little bit of flak to keep the flies away. How is Eco Noob faring over here? Tim Tebow under construction up at the top left. There he is. That will definitely help with flank defense over here, which uh, isn't looking good right now. He does have a very large number of Titans, though, which is nice to see. Gunships moving in from Grimplex of the T3 kind, Cyber and Whalers, but run into they run into a huge wall of both mobile T2 flak over here and static T1 railguns. That's an excellent incentive to leave the building immediately. Boob Plateau still firmly in the hands of Team 2, but they're not bothering to invest in it in any great way. Those four mexes still sitting at Tech 1 really is of limited economic use, as we say. Purely strategic in nature, but it wouldn't hurt to get some kind of firebase online up here, some kind of shielded position. Maybe a base to launch TAC missiles from, throw down some artillery pla emplacement, something like that. It is an investment, though. And uh, certainly not one Anyone on Team 2 looks like they're planning on making anytime soon. And the shields have gone down. And this forward base looking pretty vulnerable now. Where is Hakamaki? He's back here. Slowly withdrawing all the time. Oof, that other artillery turret taken down. He works on a another one a little bit further back. 
but uh, there seems to be a steady retreat underway over here in the east for Team 1. But the march of the Titans is underway. Grimplex under heavy pressure here. He's, he said he's got a lot of shielding, but he brings in the Whalers for extra, extra support. Titans absolutely mobbing the area right now, trying to get under the shield coverage to unleash their rapid fire cannons on the inhabitants underneath. The asylums are all nearly depleted now. Has that been an even exchange? Well, quite possibly. At the very least, it's persuaded Grimplex to back off slightly. What have we got here? Completion of a donut from Grimplex, but control transferred initially over to Ikigami and then over to Bloodir after that. Very sizable force of air superiority fighters over here for Grimplex and Bloodir. Grimplex has some 190, if I'm reading that correctly. Bloodir with some 77, so that is pretty enormous. That's what she said. Mimics over here. Meanwhile, with 144. And Arch, what have you got for us? Oh, seven. Not so great. So, so far, pretty sizable advantage in the air for Team 2. Ikonu pumping them out now. He's got 12. Is that advantage going to allow them to use that donut effectively? That's the question. Any other air experimentals under construction? Not yet. We do have a fat boy over here. Quantum Gateway on the way for Battlefront. A chicken marching its way towards the front line. What happened to Tim Tebow that we saw under construction? He's still not finished. More of them queued up. And it's getting some real support now. Commitment to the build. There we go. So Eco Noob with a Colossus over on that left-hand side, and that literally can't get to the front line quickly enough. As Grimplex takes out the remnant of what was... Actually, is that the remnant? Maybe not. I think that was the forward base, isn't it? That's just a redundant starting location for an eighth player, presumably. But uh, it's almost like he knows there's a Colossus inbound. Grimplex... Not pushing deep towards Eco Noob's base, but instead drifting in towards Foley, which looks like the path of lesser resistance, certainly. Foley hurrying along a monkey lord with his hives, trying to get that up and running ASAP, although Gridplex might be wheeling back to the northwest once more. GC stomping its way towards them. He's repositioning his Titans, ready for the fight. What's happening over in the east, meanwhile? The face-off continues. That earlier Monkey Lord, which we think, if that is the same one, hasn't gone straight away, balls deep into the enemy bases, but he's been sitting up front and hoovering up by the looks of things. He's got some 94 kills to its name. And I like this little... Artillery battery here. Battery of Gunthers under shield coverage on the front line. Just softening up. That forward base of UDs who's really having a pretty torrid time over there. But the Colossus engages. Grimplex backs off slightly. In comes Bloodier over the top. Looking like he's trying to attack his own teammates forces there but that monkey lord was completed in real short order Grimplex in trying to withdraw away from Eco Noob's Colossus end up running straight into that puppy meanwhile the donut going overhead looks like it's drifting towards the main base of Eco Noob that force being shadowed very heavily by Mimics who's coming in for the kill that he will ignore all of the air superiority fighters and just go after the donut should be able to get it in one pass with that many, I should imagine. There it goes. Not even a contest. But he probably will lose that fight overall. Lodir not engaging his uh, stealth mode. I'm sure he knows best. 
perhaps it's not worth it when you're fighting over here this deep in enemy territory. Where's Grimplex with all his fighters? Have they been killed off? It looks like it. Grimplex has lost his fighters at some point. Maybe this isn't going to go as smoothly for Team 2 as I thought. It's actually Mimix, which is looking like he's going to emerge victorious out of this one. Look at the mass field that air battle has generated. That's absolutely redonkulous. Huge quantities of mass to be garnered right there. And then you've got that huge donut with worth 30,000 mass on its own. Incidentally, I saw questions asked in the comments section the other day. How do you pull that up? It is simply control and shift that will bring up the overlying mass counters for reclaim. Strap bombers in the east from Battlefront. Make a nice bombing run there to take out a fat boy. And our first nuke of the game out from Arch in the top right hand corner. Just inside the 30 minute mark. And it's going for that front line. Any comms in the area? No, but there's a buttload of support commanders that could get ionized. This could dramatically alleviate the pressure on UD. That lovely forward base of Gunther's is toast. And at least two or three support commanders, I think, down here went up in that. Blood is forward base in tatters. His next forward base now. Station Alpha over here. With a couple of quantum gateways. I like that, actually. Huge quantities of hives surrounding the gateways, pumping out, supporting those support commanders. A strategic missile defense in there as well, because why the hell not? Good place for it. That's going to block a path for Archer's nuke, essentially from there all the way to there. Leaving him attack vectors down this side, really, unless they take that out. Of course, anybody else could build a nuke. And now we're going to see, I imagine, I don't know for certain. Like I say, when I check these replays, it is a skin through on plus 10. But I imagine we are going to see some outrageous counter-offensive brewing from Eco Noob, who has just inherited an enormous amount of Eco. <laughs> that donut and that insane mass field going to help build a lot of experimentals and speaking of which he's working on a donut of his own right now hello blood here with the experimental bomber just helping to shoo away some of these other ground based experimentals from team one that were getting big ideas above their station and were threatening the forward base here of grimplex ikigami Strolls up a GC and transfers control over to Grimplex as well to help with defense on that side. But that's a, a timely emergence right there. Ever a better persuasion tool than a giant experimental bomber, which you can't immediately shoot down. Mind you, if that had drifted any further north, Mimix would have pounced on that and had it in a second. How are we looking at ASF numbers now? So, multiple players on Team 2 rocking the ASF. 43 for Battlefront. Blood Air, 33. Gagami not building any. Grimplex with the most, though. He's got 131. Mimix with 210. That's pretty whopping. And now we are moving into the artillery phase, the late game phase. Arch getting his Duke, which has recently started construction, pinged by the enemy. So Team 2 well aware of the threat. Do we have any artillery pieces under construction for Team 2? Yes, we do. And it's Blood Air. And he's nearly done on a Disruptor. You can see real light touch defenses over here. Not much in the way of base shielding. It's all going into offensive weaponry. A 
There's a long way before that Duke's complete. Do we have other artillery pieces from the other players on Team 1? We have an emissary under construction for Eco Noob, and that's doing pretty well. That's at uh, 6,400 hit points. A lot of build capacity there, and of course we know he's just inherited a huge quantity of mass. Team 2 still ahead in overall mass accrued. 2.58 million versus 2.5 million. But that gap is slowly closing. And uh, in terms of reclaim figures, well, that just tells the story, doesn't it? Look, those are the reclaim figures. 50k, 57k, 70k. Down here, much smaller totals for Team 2. Highest on Team 2, 53k. Ikigami. Eco Noob, though, after that massive attack on that top left-hand corner, 150k he's hoovered up. So that is frightening quantities of mass right there. And he's also pulling in 735 mass per tick on those three bases. Three or arguably four bases. He's got that redundant base over here that was unowned at the start of the game that he's inherited. But he's also got the most ground to defend all by his lonesome. But he is actually, I say all by his lonesome, he's getting the lion's share of support, I think it's fair to say, from Foley. Foley definitely hanging to the left, but not shriveled. <laughs> uh, um, whereas over on the right-hand side, I, I, I crack myself up, we've got UD, obviously, Mimics, and Arch handling control of that side of things but it's going arguably less well for them team two looking more threatening on that eastern flank oh and we actually haven't mentioned boo plateau in a while mainly because it's been of no economic advantage as we said to hold throughout but it has changed hands by the looks of things a handful of titans dropped off from eco noob they were just about to finish off the land factory for Grimplex, the last production facility on that plateau. Oh, no, I tell a lie. There's another one up here for Blodair. They're both paused, of course. But uh, Ikigami turns up with a donut and shuts that down. And there's four Titans over here, which are going to share a similar fate by the looks of things. Hoovery, hoovery, giant ionization y beamy. Grimplex standing pretty far forward with his colossi. A whole bunch of shield gens to back him up. We are at uh, minus one sim speed. Not too bad, but then it's been a while since we had a major air battle. Those are the ones that really tax the CPU. For those uh, who haven't ever played this game or are new to the channel or the game, Subcom is from an era just before games were routinely utilizing multi-core support so all of these calculations are done on one core which can slow up the game somewhat under heavy strain but uh, yeah it's been a while since something's really taxed my rig since we've had the real Big Seton's matches with hundreds of ASFs on each side doing battle. Thousands of ground units going in at the same time. But this is definitely on the high end so far. Fat Boys up front for Jagged Appliance. Launching their ordnance at another set of Fat Boys belonging to Hakamaka, belonging to Yudi. Up here... Three versus two, but uh, there's a handful of chickens which can't get into the fight really, haven't got the range, just kind of lurking. Ikigami advancing ill-advisedly, I think it's fair to say, too close to this front line. Really wouldn't take much for Mimics to jump on that and shoot that down, the only disincentive being Battlefront's a blob of air superiority fighters over here. Strat bombers returning from some kind of attack mission over in the west. Emissary complete. How are we doing on the overall artillery front? So we can see 
Long range shells coming across the map over here, going straight after Blodir, because of course Blodir is the one who's been working on T3 artillery. He's got two up and running, a third on the way. But currently, Blodir is more focused on going after Eco Noob. Eco Noob, of course, also has that emissary up here, as we just mentioned. Shields holding for the moment, but in come those strap bombers once again from Battlefront, and it's the emissary which is the target, and that is a successful run if ever I've seen one. None of those bombers will return home, but I'm sure they'll all get a special plaque on the side of a wall or something. Good old job done right there if you're rooting for Team 2. Hey, Ras on the way for Ikigami. Interesting place to, to do it. He's miles away from any kind of protection, but it shouldn't take him long to complete. Colossus just drifting into range here with their supporting units of that Megalith. Megalith gonna chop down some of those Harbs. It's always satisfying when you end up in that situation and you know that, barring some surprise sneak air attack, you can hurt them with impunity because of your ranged advantage. One of the many satisfying aspects of this game. T3 artillery installation over here for UD. Under construction and another one already complete. So major investments underway from both teams for transcontinental artillery. Look at this, though. Big old push brewing over here in the west from Eco Noob and from Foley. Three GCs up front for Grimplex. He's got a, got a lot of ground support there, too. But we've also got three GCs from Eco Noob and then two Monkey Lords from Foley and that Megalith as well. Another Megalith under construction up here. Donut being brought in from Ikigami to support, but as we've already said, one order, attack order from Mimics, and that will be on the ground. We do also have an Awasar from Blodir. Transfer of control complete, though, over to Grimplex. Excessive overkill for one engineer. But it's all about to kick off. Both of those air experimentals brought in to attack that Monkey Lord and the ground spam. Did Grimplex get the bomb off? Grimplex didn't get the bomb off. Perhaps didn't like the look of that impending wave of fighters, which shoots down the donut in a matter of seconds. Battlefront gets into it with his fighters. Grimplex orders his own fighters in as well. This is going to be an interesting engagement right here. We've got another group, another massive group of ASFs from Grimplex heading in from the east. How's this one going to go as we hit minus five sin speed? My rig starts to crawl trying to deal with that exchange. This could be a monumental battle right here for determining the shift of power of air power for the next five to ten minutes of the game. Oh, drops. Or raises, sorry, from minus five to minus two. I just think Mimics has way too many fighters, dude. Oh, he has crushed Grimplex. Grimplex looked like he had enormous numbers coming in, but they just got rolled. There's still that Awasar over here. Mimics has spotted it. They're going after it. Strat Bomber's doing their best to take some hit points off those Colossus which are engaging Grimplex's Colossus nearby. Down goes the Awasar. And in comes an enormous quantity of Titans and Bricks belonging to Foley. Backed up, of course, by the Megalith. The Monkey Lord is trashing this forward base now. Shields are falling all over the shop. And those Miasmas will be next. Any commanders over here? Ikigami still... On an upgrade, 89% complete. He probably might want to think about cancelling that. This battle's drawing awfully close to his commander. Oh, that's going to be painful. He's been doing that forever, it seems. 
Oh, M, goodness. The Titans are just a few feet away. Monkey Lord takes some strap bombs over the tops, deep into the red. ARAS at 97% done, and luckily, those Titans just drift to the southwest. Guessing maybe they didn't register it, didn't see it. It does make sense, of course, though, I suppose, to take out infrastructure. Full share is on, after all. And these bases are potentially wide open right now, so if they annihilate all of Ikigami's base, all they've got to worry about is that one com that's now got an advanced RAS upgrade and no other economy to speak of and by the looks of things there's nothing on the ground right here that can stop team one's advance huge quantities of roaming titans leading these experimentals which apart from that colossus are all in pretty good nick oh and that monkey lord as well which took a battering a while ago that's on 10,000 the colossus on 20,000 megalith still got 120k thanks to ranks in veterancy 92k on that our western colossus in comes a donut from ud look at the quantity of artillery though coming out of bloody's base and bloody is pumping out these megaliths now along with those artillery pieces another nuke out who from from arch over here and we've got a novak satellite belonging to jagged appliance it's currently going after Arch's base. Where's that nuke going? Is it going to the front line over here? There's a lot of experimentals that could bite the dust by the looks of things. I want to go to split screen because there's a lot going on over here. I'm just going to temporarily close the enormous scoreboard. The nuke is going to bag a fat boy and a bunch of other stuff. Donut, meanwhile, moving in from UD, and that's going to trash what's left of this base over here. Grimplex is in a very precarious position indeed. Novak satellites roaming around and a wave of strap bombers from Econu picks off Grimplex. So he goes off. Arch somehow gets the credit on the notify mod but unless uh, those shockers were gifted over. I don't think they were because Arch is UEF and those are Aeon one, so a slight error there on the notify mod. Novak satellites prioritizing that clump of sniper bots over here. Lots of chickens under construction for UD. One hero. Ethota trying to keep those other cyber experimentals at bay. But it's no easy job. What have we got up here? UD in a transport lurking at the top of the screen having evac'd. From the front line after those Novak satellites causing problems. GC, the last of those experimentals threatening that forward position. Finally goes down and the pressure easing slightly for Team 2 over there. I think we can afford to go back to single screen now. My goodness. I say easing. Look at this. So Arch has deployed a huge number of land factories up front. It's just spamming engineers out to try and capitalize on all of this reclaim over here. And there is a butt ton of reclaim. 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 30,000, 35,000 rather, 37,000. And then all of these wrecks in between. So much gold dust ready to be scooped but look at what's happened to the main base of eco noob under pressure from bloody's artillery pieces it's in bits he's going to need every ounce of that reclaim you can see he's already fallen off down to 460 
mainly because he's power locked, of course. That should bump up a bit. There you go, 600 odd. But wow. Blodir absolutely overwhelming people with all of these disruptors. He's about to have another one online. There's another one under construction. Huge quantities of artillery. Mimic spots another donut. And that one hovering over Blodir's forward base is going to land on all of his stuff. Oh dear. Down that goes. Loads of strap bombers. From Eco Noob going after this fat boy over here. Shield capitulates. And the next thing that you know, the superstructure is a black burning husk. So now that that base up in the top left hand corner for Eco Noob has gone, there's nothing to stop Blodir turning his attention to somebody else. And it looks like he already has, and it looks like it might be Mimics, that pesky air player who's been performing so well against them in the last 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, shield starting to buckle. He does have an emissary as well. That looks like the priority target that they are going after. A couple more of those shells and that will be the end of it. Uh, we don't even need to wait for that. They've got Novak satellites buzzing above. Where are they going now? Off towards uh, Foley's base. Or are they going off towards Yudi? Yudi's actually got his commander in the transport though, so won't be targetable. What? So, Jagged Appliance ground firing Round firing with the Novaks and uh, just incinerating UD, who thought he was safe up at the top of the map. Just shows you there's no safer place than hidden at the bottom of a, a lake in friendly territory or under shield coverage. Wow. Massive push underway, though, on the right-hand side still. So even with the demise of UD, Foley now inherits all this stuff. Look at the pressure. Boo Plateau firmly under Team 1's control. Still a massive bulge over on the west. Over on the left. With constant experimental pressure. Although that's quite a solid defensive line that Bloody has put together. He's got a couple of crabs of his own. He's got some shields to assist. He might be able to repel this and push this back. There's not a lot coming in on that left-hand side. But solid pressure being applied over in the east, meanwhile. I can't get over that. Jagged troll level 9,000. Picking off Yudi in the transports. <laughs> fat boys with no immediate close range resistance able to use their artillery pieces to rain blue murder or in this case Ferrari red murder down on top of jagged appliance strap bombers from Foley returning from an attack mission over the heads of a pretty sizable advancing band of experimentals from Blodir. Blodir, who's looking absolutely lethal right now with his base-to-base -base weaponry and his eco, which is just pumping out units. Mind you, Foley is on 1.2k, but then he is sitting on multiple bases. But those artillery pieces, even with the heavy, heavy shielding around these bases now, there's just too many of them. 
shielding can't keep up. And bit by bit, these bases are getting taken down. How long before Arch becomes a target? Arch working on a uh, another Duke over here. Soon to have another nuke as well. But look at this ground pressure being applied from Foley. Brave chickens out front doing their best to contend with that constant fat boy rain. They're allowed to advance much further. These fat boys are in danger of getting range of some of Jagged's power grid up here and that artillery piece. That artillery piece which uh, looks like it's still firing defensively for the time being. Uh, they get a little bit closer it won't be able to. They must be close to cutting under that minimum range already. Four experimentals left for Bloodir in the west and uh, opposition in full retreat up here. Foley desperately trying to get a megalith up and running. Is he utilizing all of his income? Pretty much. He's got a tiny bit left in the tank. That'll be gone soon enough. Finally seeing somebody utilize the positioning of the central plateau but it's not really of great use. We are getting some tack missiles going up on the ridge. Got a few trebuchets up there. This has been absolutely insane. The sheer quantity of experimentals in this game. The amount of base-to-base -base artillery which Arch is now feeling the effects of as Bloodier retasks his ordnance. Going after that nuke launcher. They don't want any more of those launching and... They don't have to worry about it. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. So despite all of the success on the ground, I don't like the way this is going for Team 1. Their chickens have died over here. They've still got a couple of fat boys, but they have run out of units despite Foley's monstrous income. Eco Noob, because of Bloody's artillery, has been massively hampered. Still has a, a few donuts kicking around. Can they protect them, though? Uh, I think probably not. Mimics, who's been absolutely brutal with his air superiority fights the whole game, his base is gone. He's lost his manufacturing facilities. He's putting out a paltry 177 mass per tick. And now Bloodier is going to be able to hurt these donuts at will if they come much further big old support as well from battlefront just waiting to get in on it eco noob withdraws but there's the control k's they can't handle it anymore and you know what that might seem premature to some of you but quite frankly they were done they didn't have the ability to break through on the ground and they had lost the base-to-base -base wars, all of their standoff weaponry was down and it was done. Wow, so we've played less than 50 minutes game time, but so far that's run them on the day they played it two hours because obviously a replay runs much smoother than a game which is being synced between 14 people. So that was, uh, <laughs> that was a serious, serious game. Arch going to utilize the toys that have been gifted over for one last Hail Mary attack. Leads with the experimental bomber that lasts no time at all. As we've already said, massive air advantage now rests with Team 2. Another donut down and another and then the final one falls. And there's the control K. Well done, Team 2. It really looked like they were on the back foot for quite some time there. After that massively successful push down the western flank that annihilated Ikigami, he did 
build back up to his credit. He very nearly died getting his upgrade, remember, down here somewhere. Where was it? He was stuck on an upgrade, like, there or something crazy. And they just strolled past him. They didn't see him. But, uh, yeah, he managed to build back up. But Grimplex uh, bought it somewhere down here. All of the infrastructure was taken out. And Bloody's main base, for a time, looked like it might be threatened. But uh, he was putting out so much eco. And he had all of his disruptors. How many did he uh, get in the end? He had seven. That's disgusting quantities of T3 artillery and he just obliterated Eco Noob up here in the top left hand corner with it. The legs went out from under him. Next he took out Mimics. That uh, finished off air threat from Team 1 and then uh, really what else was going to happen? That was absolutely hilarious. That ground fire ground fire Novak's attack from who was it? it was from jagged just inseminated incinerated that it didn't inseminate <laughs> i mean it, maybe it did it depends on the imagery you want to use but uh yeah it went badly for poor old ud who thought he was hiding up in a smart position but nope alas it wasn't to be and uh, yeah the rest was history what a crazy crazy game so yeah 50 minutes but for them it took two hours. Nonetheless, though, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've seen everything and you want more, or if you want to come and hang out with the burgeoning community that I'm trying to build with uh, the help of some others uh, over on Discord, then uh, please consider Patreon. It's a mere dollar a month. I think what you spend a dollar on, that's nothing. We've got 52 casts, I think, up on there so far. There'll be another one out this week. Uh, it's growing all the time, so lots of premium content for your eyes only for a mere dollar a month. What are you waiting for? Come join us, come play with us. It'll be good fun. All right, that's enough from me. Until next time, guys, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.